Hi, this is Gene Bosler, and I am in Bel Air, Texas, and we're looking at two severely distressed live oaks. Now, I was just called out to this property to give a price on pruning. Uh, it's a good neighborhood. <clears throat> I like coming out here, and I did kind of like the source of the lead. So I agreed to come out and take a look at it, although I don't really engage in what they call competitive bidding. Um, it's, it's not like tree care is as simple as plucking carrots. I guess it would make sense to, to get bids for things like painting and roofing and garage door repair. Uh, but um, <clears throat> trees like this, I, would, I, I wouldn't go, you know, shopping or making any decisions based on price. That's another, that's another issue, another topic for another time. These trees happen to be in severe decline and I'm sure the other people she called out are or will be happy to provide her a quote to prune. My quote is already typed up and written but it doesn't contain a pruning proposal. There is some dead stuff in here and sure I can send some guys out here to pick it out but uh, you know these people need to spend some money getting these trees right with Jesus so to speak. Um, good fresh new foliage that's good like to see it it's early spring so the foliage is coming out but there's tip die back severe, severe tip die back there's a ton of dead branches the crown is extremely thin I would give this tree a, a four or a five on a scale of one to ten just judging from its leaf population the bark is coming off of this one like crazy there's tons of bore holes now these may be saprophytic. I mean, this is life, but that's dead up underneath it. So I don't want to, I don't want to turn something into something it may not be. I wouldn't call this. I would treat this trunk for bores. I would treat it for bleeding canker. I would treat it the tr the tree for root rot. I would treat to suppress any kinds of leaf damaging, sucking, piercing, chewing, rasping, lapping, <laughs> mites topical leaf disease, you name it. There's already some chewing insect damage on the tree. There's already some either aerophyte mite or thrips damage that's caused a, uh, leaf deformity. There's already a little bit of blister. I suspect white fly, suspect aphids, probably scale. Tree like this that's in this severe level of, of advanced state of decline is an emergency state. Um, I also think these people really cared about their tree at the time they built their new house and they took some care because this is a big wide this is a big wide two car garage behind me but it narrows to one so there's only one access to the street so it's a real narrow driveway and that was done because they wanted to preserve this tree but I seriously doubt that there was a an arborist that knows anything about tree preservation involved in this project because way too much damage was done to the tree and it could have been done a lot differently. So now we're looking at a tree in severe decline, plus it's under irrigation. This whole place is, it's not rained in, what, um, 10, 11 days. This whole place is totally saturated. It's way too wet. I don't really have a problem with the plant material that's here. Most of it, particularly, I really love the fact that they have jasmine. And, and it's not mature enough to be up against the trunk. But that trunk, I'm glad the trunk is excavated, although there are some problems there. Let me show you while, while we're at it. Look at this. This is, this is totally rotten here. I mean, this tree is, this is rotten here. I think it was buried and somebody made an attempt to excavate the root collar at some point, demonstrating some cursory knowledge of, of tree health, which is good. I'm glad to see that. But it's, you know, this tree needs, needs some real, T uh, bona fide grown up TLC. This tree, they should never have allowed the grass to grow all the way up to the trunk. They got this nice, beautiful, fresh, lush grass. It's probably kept so with a weed and feed program. I'm opposed to that. You can't have any kind of pesticide pre emergent, I mean, herbicide pre emergent, weed and feed, or any of that sort of nonsense. Cannot be allowed to be used anywhere in the root zone of this tree. So this entire bed needs to be all the way out to here, probably eight radial feet, and this needs root invigoration. Uh, remove the t turf grass, take the damage to the fibrous feeder roots on the part of the tree, because it's going to regenerate super fast after we do root invigoration to this tree. All the way around here, might as well, while you're at it, tie it into that bed. So it's going to be a new look for the house, but it's going to be better for the tree. Because this grass, frankly, who cares about it? It contributes not one penny to this property value. But these trees, if we can keep those going, I'm talking fast because I, you know, I drank a big bunch of coffee, so I apologize for that. But this, this whole area here 
needs to be stripped of its grass, soil reconditioning, Bartlett style root invigoration procedure uh, with the air spade, with the organic matter, with the sulfur, the other amendments based on the soil analysis. And while we're talking about soil analysis, let's go ahead and stick a probe in the ground and see what we find. Because I can, I can assure you from the surface here, basically, I, I do see some sand, and I'm guessing there's not a whole lot of organic matter in this soil here. And I do think this lawn is being kept this green artificially. So, I mean, you can have a green lawn and you can have healthy shade, but you've got to have a lot of organic matter in the soil if it's going to work. And there's no evidence of there ever having been a top dressing done, at least not yet this year. So, oh my goodness, yeah, we're looking at pure clay here. Let me put it in the sun. Look at that clay. Pure, very wet, solidly packed clay. This is good and dark. This has got some organic matter in it. I'm very pleased. Very compact, though. Very wet, very compact. A um, lot darker than I anticipated, but it certainly, certainly uh, needs some nourishment. So part of the plan for these trees is going to include some, some, some nutrition. Thanks for taking a look. I, I consider these trees an emergency. Um, and, and I would, I think it's worthwhile to try some of these, some of these measures that include nu nutrition and they include trying to keep as many leaves on this tree for as long as possible. And if, since it's still only uh, early to mid-April, if we can affect any kind of second foliar flush before full summer, we can maybe uh, start to see an actual improvement. Because look, you don't, you don't, a, a trees like this don't bounce back from decline. As a matter of fact, you, you, you really kind of, if you think in terms of a parabolic curve, you gotta, you got to hit bottom before you can start inching your way back up. And so our objective here really is to stabilize. I, th I think you got to th think we really have to think in terms of its two stages. You have to stabilize the decline process before you can start reversing decline. And I mean, I know that people have used graphic depictions to speak in terms of a, a decline spiral for trees. Um, that just shows how the dog pile effect happens and more and more problems that could be avoided or, or mitigated pile onto a tree once it's entered into the decline spiral. But I'm speaking in terms of, of kind of stabilize, cross fingers, thumb rosary beads, and then start thinking in terms of inching our way back up. So I, won't, I wouldn't, wouldn't be expecting, despite all of our, if we threw the full kitchen sink at this and all of the recommendations, we went with everything in order to do this, then I wouldn't expect a, you know, like a, a dramatic, magical, magical doubling of the leaf population sometime in the next two to three years. But I would expect a, you know, single digit to low double digit <laughs> percentage increase in the leaf population. Comments? Uh, welcome, wideworldoftrees.com. Thank you.